Hi, my name is Jim Moyle, and welcome to episode two in my uh, Pesta and PowerShell series. Today we're going to have a look at to uh, install and update the uh, Pesta module, and we're also going to have a quick look at the, the most basic of tests. So all the code is uh, on GitHub for this, um, and if you're following along and uh, you're using VS Code, which you should be, because uh, it's much better than the ISE. Then uh, to run these commands, you should have an elevated uh, com elevated um, VS Code. So run as administrator. Um, let's have a look at the environment that we're running this on. So um, PowerShell version is uh, version 5.1, and the uh, Windows version is Windows 10.17.09. So just in case uh, you haven't set up the environment, then we'll need to um, set the execution policy. And let's have a look. Now this is a vanilla next, next, next installed of Windows 10. Ah, we already have Pesta installed. Excellent. So Pesta comes pre-installed on all versions of Windows 10 and uh, Server 2016. All right, great. We don't have to install it. All right, well, let's just update it. So we need to keep up with our updates, right? Hmm. I think we may have a problem with this. Yeah, so I'll, it can't be updated. Well, as it says, it's because it's not installed using the install module. It came pre-installed with the OS. So, if we use find module, which will go out to the PowerShell gallery and see if there's any information, uh, any uh, new modules on the PowerShell gallery. Well, let's have a look. So, let's have a look in that variable. Ah, there is. Version 4.40, and the one pre-installed was 3.40. Okay. So, <clears throat> some nice more information that we get from the uh, find module out of here. Um, so let's have a look at some of that uh, information. Uh, what PowerShell version is the minimum version to run for Pesta? 2.0. So for if any of you poor, poor people are still stuck on 2.0, that's fine. Pesta will still run. Uh, let's have a look at the documentation for Pesta. So, here we are. Here's the GitHub. So, Pesta is obviously open source, nicely on GitHub. And if we have a look in the wiki, then we have the documentation as well. And it's great documentation. Um, if you prefer to learn by reading documentation rather than watching videos, then feel free to go and learn about it there. Um, now, we already found out that it's on the PowerShell gallery. So, let's have a look in the PowerShell gallery. Uh, not so much information. Um, that's fine. If you want information, go to the GitHub wiki rather than the PowerShell gallery. Now, <clears throat> because we can't update it, and actually, there's a different cert on the um, module that comes shipped with Windows rather than the module that's on uh, the PowerShell gallery. So we need to uh, skip the publisher check, and because there's already a version installed, we'll, we'll need to force it as well. So we'll go out, we'll install a module from the PowerShell gallery with force and skip publisher check to make sure that it actually comes down. And there we go. So now does the update module work? So hopefully now this won't give us an error, and it doesn't. Great, and we're already on the latest version of Festa we've just downloaded from the PowerShell Gallery. All right, great. So now what can we see in uh, Get Module? All right, now we've got two versions of Pesta installed. Ah, okay. So we've got the original 3.4, and we've got the brand new 4.4 as well. Now those both sit in the, in the modules directory. Let's have a quick look at what that looks like on the file system. 
Yeah, and we can see that we've got both versions of Pestis sat there. All right, so is PowerShell clever enough to give us the right version when we do import module? Well, let's have a look. So let's import the module and now get the commands. Great. We've got version 4.4. Um, there's plenty of commandlets exposed in the PESTA module and uh, we will go through um, all of those. Uh, not today though. The only thing we're going to have a look at today is this one new fixture. And what new fixture does is it creates a skeleton for writing your very first function along with um, PESTA tests. And we'll just run new fixture give it a path and give it the function name. That function name I've said is going to be test me. It'll create the um, create the uh, directory and we'll have a look. So it's created me a function called testme.ps1 and now we've also got this oddly named file as well testme.test.ps1. Now this format for um, the file name is what tells Pester that what sits inside that file is a pester test. So essentially, if you create a file with this sort of like double extension .test.ps1, the pester module will know that there is pester tests inside that um, script that it should run when uh, when you're when you're uh, running your tests. So what's it given us in terms of a skeleton function? Well. Not much. That's probably the bare minimum that you can get as a uh, as a function. Okay, that's fine. Hopefully, we've all got snippets with you know of um, advanced functions and and everything that we uh, like to use in there, so we can replace that with whatever we wish. And then we've got this. Well, this is all a bit strange, isn't it? So. What does this mean? So let's have a look at uh, something I've prepared earlier. Let's put a breakpoint in there to, uh, to have a look at what's going on here. So let's just run this. And we've got these two lines, which is <clears throat> here equals blah, blah. Now, my invocation is a um, automatic variable in the local scope there we can see it and then my command there and then path and let's just extend this so we can see it all all right so my invocation dot my command dot path is giving us the path to this test.ps1 file okay split path parent is giving you um this so the directory that contains the pest test now what's going on here what's soot well soot is instead of doing the parent is doing leaf and that will give you um the name of the uh, ps1 without the preceding path so it will be test me dot test dot ps1 and then we're doing a replace of the dot tests with a dot. So effectively what that's doing is it should give us the name of this other file testme.ps1. So let's just check that. Oh. So we can see testme.ps1. Now <clears throat> these are really useful variables and I actually rely on these quite a lot during when I'm writing pest tests because it doesn't matter what the working directory is in terms of running that test you can use relative paths from especially the here variable to make sure that um, any other bits that you need to pull into your testing you know if you've got XML files or whatever you can then do a relative path from here the variable and then find all your stuff so you don't have to put absolute paths and you don't have to worry about the working directory so if you 
are calling this by something else and your relative past won't work, here is a great thing to use. So what's happening next? So effectively, what we're doing is <coughs> we are dot sourcing and that, remember, here is the path to the dot um, function, and sud is the function itself, the testme.ps1. So we're dot sourcing it. So those three lines are dot sourcing your function, so it loads into memory. So it's available from this test file. And it's giving you two useful variables that you can use later on. I'm just going to stop that right there. Now, We've got a whole lot of stuff now. If you look in there, so it doesn't all the comments and things, those things that I've added just to just to help me remember what I'm talking to you about. What does this describe? So there's quite a lot of stuff in Pesto which doesn't really conform to uh, your standard PowerShell nomenclature. Um, I'm not sure why, maybe because it's test oriented and that's how they do it in, in the testing world. Um, but you will find that, yeah, some things are a little odd in terms of how would you expect it. Because describe is actually a function and it is not in the noun, uh, sorry, verb noun um, format. But it's a function and what it does is it sets up a PowerShell scope for all of your tests to run in. And that is a shared scope between anything that is in this describe block. Now, you want to say something useful there. Test me will do for the time being. And then we have it, also a function from the PESTA module. It blocks are tests within each describe scope. And each describe scope can have many, many it tests. And in fact, they probably will have many it tests. It's a good thing to have lots of it functions within the describe scope. So now, given that it is the individual test, so you name that test whatever you like. And then within that, it already sets up a little test for you. And should, again, another function from the PESTA module and should is an assertion and this is actually the real guts of your test and it compares something to something else in this case it's comparing true to what it should be and that is false yep now if this test fails which looking at it it should it will throw an exception and that is essentially how PESTA works if an exception is thrown within a test then that test will fail and all these should assertions do is designed to throw an exception within an it block and then the it block will say well I've passed or failed now we can either run this by um, running F5 or within VS Code particularly we have a nice little button here which says run tests all right and we've got a load of right host stuff here describing test me there you go that's the name of the describe block does something useful and that's the name of the it block now it tells us a couple of very useful things here right it tells us what we expected it to be and what it was so great for predicting what your function should do in terms of output and what it actually has in terms of output so let's actually see what happens when the test passes and there's nothing quite so satisfying when you're running passive tests here's a whole screen full of green tests it's a great thing to see all right so installing updating pesta and this is super basic of what the skeleton it gives you does 
we'll dig much more into um, how to create your own tests and what you can test in later episodes. If you enjoyed this, please hit the like button. And if you want to sit here, if you want to see more, hit the subscribe button.